Aloha and welcome to Let's Evolve Together. My name is Deepa. We're doing a very special yoga class for you today on the beach, on the big island of Hawaii. And this is a very special and unique experience as I'm working together with my husband today. He will be creating music as we move. So I'm gonna let him explain exactly what he's doing so you know. Thank you. Aloha everybody. I am Unity and I did decide to bring down a bit of modular synthesis, which quickly explained each purpose for each module is specific, and it's either a sound or a movement or a uh, motion, if you will, or whatnot. But nothing here is a full song. Nothing is full patterns. It is all created and played for you live and right in the moment to really flow with this class and to really bring us all together through sound and through movement. Uh, with that, I'll take it back to you. Okay, so let's get started by taking a seat on the floor. And I don't have one here with me today, but if you are more comfortable sitting on a cushion to alleviate back pressure or pain, please do that. With a gentle spine, you're just going to soften your shoulders. Take a moment to release the muscles around the eyes and the forehead. We're so used to making an expression on our faces. Relieve yourself of the need to express and draw your energy and attention inward toward your heart. The heart space is vast, unlimited. Reflect now, how often do you allow yourself to sink into the heart space? Tuning into the sounds, the music, the waves, even if a plane flies overhead, whatever sounds come through, observe, heighten your awareness to your surroundings. Start moving your spine side to side as if you were in a boat, the ocean waves rocking you side to side. You'll notice as we move through the class today, I give you the direction to follow your body's guidance. This is really important. Your body speaks to you every day. And if you've never heard it, or you want to get better at listening to it, this class is a wonderful way to start doing that. It's just as if you're waking up in the morning and stretching before you get out of bed. It's a natural impulse to move, to break up any stiffness. It's that same thing. You're gonna just follow the flow that the body is guiding you toward. So just that side to side rocking motion starts to get a little bigger. And I noticed I'm even naturally going into a figure eight shape. You don't have to follow me. This is your yoga class. I'll give you a little guidance. Listen within for direction. We are getting a little bigger with the movement now. And you'll start to feel that 
Go down into the hips and the low back as you move a little deeper. And you may want to start turning the head over one shoulder and then the other as you move. Adding a little twist. A little reach. Feeling the sensation of the arms moving over the legs. Noticing your breath. Notice if it, you're holding any tension anywhere. And moving in a way that just feels really good for you. Like you're giving yourself a massage through movement through opening the body in different ways. Now we'll start to make the movement a little bit smaller as we come back up to a longer spine, crown reaching toward the sky. And go ahead and scoop your left arm up. Feel your heart and chest open as your right hand comes to the mat. See curl your back. As you come forward, release with the right arm following, leaning on your left hand now. Sunrise your chest and arms up toward the sky and lean on your hands. Shift your legs underneath you for a tabletop position and walk back to the center of your mat. Come down into table with your knees under your hips and your wrists under your shoulders. And we're gonna try the table plank position. This is a really nice, gentle way to do plank. It really activates the lower belly, helps warm up your arms, and it's a lot gentler on the low back. You're always welcome to do the typical plank position with the legs straight. Look down between your hands. Bend your elbows. Curl your toes under. Lift your knees up. Notice if you pull your belly button to your spine, if that feels more supportive. And just bend your knees, sorry, bend your elbows just a few times here to warm up the triceps. Now hold it. Pumping the knees, rolling over the toes. And hold it. And then the knees apart, hips to heels, Bhaktasana, dropping the forehead down below the heart. So the heart rises up in devotional pose. Feel that release in the low back. Dropping your elbows down, slowly lower. The elbows will peel off the mat as you lower your belly down, all the way down onto the floor. Place your hands palm down on your yoga mat, preparing for Sphinx pose. Slide your hands out until your forearms are pressing down against the mat. Press your hands down as you lift your heart up. Feel that beautiful opening in the chest and the low back. And we'll move with this. So slowly lower the upper back down toward the mat as you slide the hands back toward your chest and repeat, slide the hands and arms down, stabilize. Then a gentle pressure into your mat as you lift the heart up toward the sun. Let's do that a couple more times. Go at your own pace. Again, if you wanna add or subtract, you could even stay here and do a little Bhujangasana Cobra lift to strengthen the back muscles if you want a little bit more challenge. I'm going to slide my hands out, press my forearms down, and lift my heart up. Take a moment to enjoy the heart expression and to consciously release anything that might be holding you back today, this week, this month, this year, whatever it is. Let it know you're letting it go. Feel lighter as it floats away. Any worries or concerns are taken away with the ocean waves. Back out to sea.
go ahead and slide the hands back. Push your hands down into the mat and relax your back by coming into Bhaktasana again. Coming back into your tabletop position, just keep an eye on your breath. We're doing observational breath, so I'm not going to cue your breathing. I want you to breathe how it feels most natural for you. Curl your toes under, and we'll come back into that wonderful table plank that we did before. I'm going to add something to it this time, so go ahead and lift your knees up. Again, notice how it feels if you draw your belly button to your spine and add a little twist. If this is too much, just hold it like we did before in that little table plank just for a breath or two. So you're going to add this little twist for the obliques and it starts to loosen the hips up for bigger movement later to come. Now, go ahead and push your hips towards your heels for Adho Mukha Svanasana, Downward Dog. Pumping the feet back and forth. Pandiculate your spine as you lower down through plank and come into Upward Facing Dog, Urdhva Mukha Svanasana. Again, that nice deep opening, a little deeper now because we're activating the hip, opening the hip flexors here as well, a little bit deeper into the low back. If you need to, just place your knees down on the mat. Don't feel like you have to hold that. One more time. We're going to go ahead and press the hips to the heels and come up and back into Adho Mukha Svanasana, Downward Dog. Pandiculate through the spine so it's an uncurling through plank and then an arching of the back with support. I can bend my elbows a little here for a little bounce. I can twist the hips just because that feels nice. And then knees down and rest back, hips to heels one more time and release. Rock side to side. Remember that swaying motion that we did in the beginning. And use this time to release your body in any way that feels comfortable. You can even walk your arms to one side. Enjoy a little side body stretch. Walking through the center. Back to plank. Table plank. This time, you're going to bring the left knee up toward the chest and then come back. The left knee and then come back. And now this last time, you're going to step it through the hands for a lunge. Plant your back foot down and turn the foot out for stabilization. You want to stand so that you feel stable, like you're not going to fall. So if you need to open the feet a little wider, feel free to do that. Also, if you want to keep the back foot parallel, just go ahead and bend your knee for stability. And we'll inhale the arms up. Excuse the big airplane noise. I'll stop talking for a moment. And just go ahead and camel the arms down as you open your chest at the top. Then release your torso over the front leg. This can be a bent knee, or you can try it straight. Really, it's what feels good to you, but I'm going to go through a release. I'm going to plant my foot down for stability in the back. And then an inhale and a deep opening for the chest. And then a soft release through the spine. And then an opening. So let's do one more of those. It's like you have wings and you're really spreading them out and then opening them up as if you're on the top of the tallest mountain. You're taking in all that fresh air and then release your hands, interlace your fingers below the tailbone and draw the arms up behind you. As you tip over the front leg, drop your head, relax your neck. And again, you're welcome to keep both knees slightly bent. If you want to practice straightening, you can just take a moment to pulse. 
the connective tissue and the fascia around the muscles and inside the muscles likes movement. Pulsing helps to increase range of motion. Also, if you ever need to stop to drink some water, please do so. This helps the body increase range of motion also. Let's take the back leg down into a deeper runner's lunge. Drop the right hand to the mat. And inhale, twist toward your front leg. You can bend your top arm behind your back for a deeper twist through the chest. Release your arm down to the mat. Come back to plank, we'll try the other side. Again, notice how it feels if you draw your belly button up toward the spine, does that feel more supportive? You can do a twist if you want, you can just hold it for a moment. You can move forward and back. So go ahead and bring your knee with you and we'll step the leg between the hands and we're just doing the other side. So whichever side you didn't do, don't worry about what side I'm on. Plant the back foot down in a place that feels stable for you. Inhale the arms up through Virabhadrasana one. Open the chest at the top. We'll start with that release added to the mix. Fanning your wings out as you release your spine over the front leg and then opening at the top. So just do that a few times on your own. This time we'll interlace the hands, open the chest, and then tip over the front leg. And if you want to, you can add that leg pulse here. Drop the neck. You can really bend both knees. You don't have to keep the back leg straight. Be more experimental. Trust your body. And move in a way that feels good for you today. Bending the front knee a little deeper, come back into your lower, lower lunge, and you can always do this with the back leg on the mat. Plant the opposite hand down, turn toward the bent knee, drawing your arm up if that feels comfortable, behind the back, or you can simply rest it on the thigh. Now take that back foot, bring it back up, plant it down, bend your knees and turn your feet toward the camera, toward the front if you're not already. Parallel feet and bend side to side. Opening up the adductors inside the thighs there with a very gentle stretch. I'm supporting myself with the floor. If you need to, you can put your hands on your legs instead to be higher up. Remember, whatever feels good for your body. And if you have a surface, you can use a chair or a couch for more support. You can roll forward on the toes and back toward the heels. Then bending the knees, unroll your spine, stacking your vertebrae. Turning your left foot out and the right foot turns in slightly. And just for a moment, bend and straighten the front leg. We're gonna add a little movement to our warrior two pose, Utita Parshvakanasana. We're kinda gonna move them, move through them, keep them together a little bit. Let's go ahead and take a moment of stillness here. 
reaching the arms up nice and long, gazing over the front fingertips. If you'd like to add that side to side wave, just following the music. And let that motion start to ripple up through the spine and through the head. As you move deeper, you can start to move the arms a little more creatively. You may even notice you do a nice reverse stretch up in Warrior Two. And let's go ahead and release the front arm down, bring the back arm up by the ear. I have a little pressure here on the top of the thigh. And go ahead and release your spine forward, just like we did in the very beginning, warming up the back. Same kind of thing with that release forward. So nice little side bend to open up the side body, and then a release for the back and the neck, and the head drops down. Keep your stance shorter if you need more balance and support. Experiment with your positioning. If you want to keep moving, go ahead. You can also pause and enjoy the asana. Drawing the torso up. Come back into that reverse warrior again. I'm going to try a little launch in prep for Ardha Chandrasana, the balance pose. So you're just coming up on the ball of the foot in the back. You're leaning your weight into your front leg. And you're going to test your balance. Both arms out will help. So just test. Lean forward, drop back. Try that again. Lean forward, drop back. Once you're in the pose, you can stay small like this. You don't have to do anything big. Let's try a couple more. And let's see if we can launch into the asana, really reaching down through the bottom fingers. Keep your bottom knee bent for more stability. Again, please don't feel like you have to lift your back leg high. If you start to lose your balance, bend the knee a little more and release. Come back into reverse warrior. And we'll try the other side. Turn that foot in, release the arm. Go ahead and bend the knees and we'll do a little figure eight with the hips. Start to get into that rhythm of the drum that you're hearing in the music. The rhythm of the ocean. Just a little more beat. A little more rhythm. A little more release. And you can even add the arms. Don't be afraid to let go, to follow your breath, to be creative, to do what feels right for you. Okay, settle down, bring it smaller, and begin to turn the other foot out, the leg you did not do. 
back foot turns in. And remember, you can experiment here for stability. Don't ever feel like you have to match someone else's body or pose. You want it to feel right. You don't want it to look like something specific. It's, it's just how it feels, not how it looks. I'm just doing a little extra hip release because it feels nice. Feel free to add. Okay, let's try our Virabhadrasana 2 and pause and enjoy the pose. Feel free to bend and straighten the leg if you need a little more movement. Begin to do a little sway here. Really dancing with the music as you start to move a little deeper. Add the neck and head and be gentle. Make sure you're listening. A lot of times we'll re receive warnings about potential injuries, but oftentimes we're not paying attention and that's when accidents happen. So keep your internal observation lights on. Add the shoulders. A little more arms. The arms start to rise up until you find yourself in that beautiful reverse warrior. Pulse the bottom leg if you want. Then find a release in Uttita Parshvakanasana, lateral angle. I find that if I press down and out through my feet, it helps me balance. You might want to experiment with a little more weight through the feet, especially as you spiral because you're moving. You might need a little extra support there. I'm going to add that test for my balance pose, Ardha Chandrasana, so I bring the back leg in just a little bit more so I have a more narrow base. Reach both arms out, both fingers, all fingers out. Launch off the back foot, keep the front knee bent. It's a very little shift in your balance, shift in your weight. Let me know if you see any whales breaching in the ocean. It is whale season here, it does happen. It may have already happened. We'll have to watch this over to find out. Okay, so let's see if we can slowly go into it. Remember, keep your knee bent if you want more stability. Keep your back leg low if you need to. And really push down if you want to lift the back leg up a little more. Push down into the standing leg. bending the front knee. If you happen to fall out of it and you want to try again, you can always keep trying. Go ahead and release the hips here. Turn the right foot in, or whichever foot you didn't do, and do that little hip swirl. Bend the knees. You start to release your hips a little bit. Following the music. Okay, so we're going to add a little more this time. A couple extra poses to the sequence. Get you moving a little deeper. Challenge your balance a little bit. There's another plane coming. <laughs> Go ahead and move how it feels right for you. Thank you. 
Okay, so we're gonna start the same way we did before. Go ahead and turn that opposite foot out. Back foot turns in for support. We'll just move a little bit quicker this time. So go ahead and take yourself into a comfortable lunge. Start in your Virabhadrasana two. Enjoy your asana. Gazing over the front hand, keep the back shoulder, shoulders released. And start to move. You can add swirls, circles, sways. Use your intuition and follow your body's lead. We're only gonna do a couple of these this time. You can add or subtract. Now go ahead and reach. Same arm as bent knee. Reaches down toward the earth for support. Go ahead and practice your balance weight shifts or come right into Ardha Chandrasana. Back arm comes up for support. Keep it low if you need to. Bending the bottom knee. Go ahead and touch down as we transition into another balance. You're just bringing that back leg forward, keeping both knees bent into revolved dancing Shiva, Nataraj Asana. Keep that bottom knee bent. In fact, bend it a little deeper. Take the back leg and hook the ankle over the thigh. Support it and balance figure four stretch. Now go ahead and step away from the camera, away from your monitor to step to the other side. And we're gonna try that same thing on this side. Pause in beer two. Enjoy the, the presence of yourself in this space and doing this for yourself today. Feeling gratitude. Add some movement. Shifting into Ardha Chandrasana. Swing the back leg to the front, bend both knees, balance and, art, and revolve Natarajasana. You can bounce here if you like. Bend the back knee a little bit deeper. Hook the front ankle over the standing thigh. Supported figure four balance stretch. Take that top leg, step behind yourself in a big circle. Step to the middle of the mat and rest. And just move gently. Okay, so we're gonna add and we're gonna get moving a little bit quicker. And we're just gonna combine our little warming vinyasa that we did after we got up off the floor and our standing poses together. We'll go through it one time, well, once on each side. And then we'll find our calm and our center and start to come down to the floor for a little meditation. But we're just getting moving, so we're gonna get a little bit more going musically so that it can match our movement. So we'll go ahead and start by coming to the short edge of your mat. Roll down. Step back into table plank. If you wanna come and walk back, actually let's do that, it's so fun. You're gonna walk and table. Opposite arm, opposite leg, forward and then try the other side. And then back. Forward. Last time. And come to center and hold and balance. You can do the twists. 
Pulse to your elbows. Shift forward and back. You can always rest here in Bhaktasana. Now try bringing the right leg forward and step into lunge. Plant the back foot down, drawing your arms up. You can do hands together here. If you really like that camel, add the camel arms, especially if you have tight neck and shoulders. This is helpful. And a release. Open the arms and bring the hands together. Interlace, chest opener. Bending both knees if you need to. Fold over, release the neck and head. Parshvottanasana. Bend the front knee. Hand on the thighs, you twist toward the front bent knee. Plant your hands down, come into plank. Forward and back. Add the left leg this time. And then step between the hands. Plant the back foot down. Virabhadrasana one. Open the arms to camel if you like. And anytime, you're welcome to keep moving. Even if I'm holding, you can keep moving if you like that. Chest opener. Forward fold. You're welcome to keep your knees bent. You can pulse the legs, straightening and bending. Release the hands. Bend the front knee, scoot the back leg further behind you as you add the twist toward the front leg. This time you release your spine, hands on either side of the foot. Turn the front foot forward for straddle. Remember this? Lunge side to side. Work your way up to standing. Start to move, and as you do that, walk your feet. Front foot turns out. That side you want to start on. Virabhadrasana two. And sway. Find those beautiful spots of pause and opening, stretching and releasing. You can add movement if you'd rather. It's your creative choice. Preparing for Ardha Chandrasana, the balance. Short stance. You can even shift your weight. Something a little different. And start to take the back foot off. Slow down as you start to completely weigh down into the front leg. Slowly bending the bottom knee if it's not already. You can touch down if you need to as you bring the back leg in front for a revolved Ardha Chandrasana. Figure four, bend the bottom knee deep. Ukatasana and figure four stretch. Turn away from the camera or monitor. Step back to the short end of the mat and let's do a little back release. Bend the knees, swing the arms up. Release the torso and arms down. Using your momentum, swing at the bottom and then come up. Try that again. Arms up, release down. Do a couple swings. This time, step out. Fear of dressing the two.
Uttita Parashwakanasana. As we go deeper and deeper, I'm doing less and less cues, allowing you more room to add what you feel or subtract what you feel. Anything goes. Preparing for Ardha Chandrasana. Bend the bottom knee. <laughs> Touch down. Draw the front leg, back leg to the front. Ardha Chandrasana, revolved, you can bounce. Add your little hand mudra. Be the goddess or god that you are. Visualize that you're your favorite deity because you are. Figure four. Turn back away from the monitor. Stand in the center of your mat. Walk it out. And then go ahead and roll down. Bend your knees. If you can, shift your weight toward the balls of your feet and then your heels. and then come to a low crouch position. Just drop your forehead to your knees and stretch your spine from tailbone to crown. Go ahead and sit down on your right hip. Extend your left leg out. If this is comfortable for you, you may want to add a pillow for more support. Go ahead and do some nice, easy ankle rotations. Follow your ankle's lead with your torso. And then bend your knee and release your spine. Now twist toward the bent knee and straighten the right leg, sorry, left leg. Twist toward the bent knee and then straighten as you twist away from it. One more time. This time go ahead and roll the back leg under for Ikapada Kapatasana Pigeon Pose. Again, if you need a pillow under the bent hip, put it right under the glute for more support. Go ahead and massage the glutes here as you rock side to side, kind of rolling it out until you get comfortable. You can use your fists, you can tuck your toes under, extending the back leg. This feels really good to me on my hip flexor. You might love it, you might hate it. You can also add a twist away from the leg as you look over the back shoulder. It feels amazing through that twist through the body, that line of the body. Bend the knee and then straighten. Don't overdo it. Make sure you're tuning in to the body's nuances, not tuning out. If you want to add more, you're welcome to grab the back foot. Releasing the leg. Relax your torso completely. Come down to the mat. And then you're just gonna come up, take a seat again, switch sides, tuck the left leg in and extend the right leg out or whichever side you didn't do. Go ahead and roll the ankle.
Follow with your torso. Pulsing, you can straighten and bend the leg. Or you can just bend the knee and let your torso round over the leg. Extending the leg as you twist over the opposite bent knee. Bringing out the spine. Bend as you release. Extend as you twist. Let's just do one more of those. And then go ahead, Ekapada Kapatasana on whichever side you didn't get to do yet. Again, pillow under the front glute if you need more support. And if this is entirely too much for you, you can always go into a low lunge with the back knee down on the floor. So don't ever feel trapped. Make it work for your body. Make it work for your special circumstance. Using your fists for support. And again, you can experiment here. Back toes tucked maybe, add a twist. Try it out, see what feels good and right in this moment and then enjoy. For a deeper stretch, catch the back ankle, pull the foot toward you. I always go inside the foot. You're welcome to go on the outside as well. Long leg down and release into a forward fold over the front leg, down to your mat, release your head. I like to rock side to side here and massage and open up the glute by moving my hips. You never have to stay static. You can. But if it feels good to move, move. Even as you're getting out of the asana or getting back into it. And then go ahead and take a seat. Turn back toward the monitor. Any last minute releases here. Bend your knees and drop your knees side to side to release your back. Work your way down onto the floor on your back. Draw your knees up toward your chest. Draw your knees in toward your heart. And then curl your head up toward your knees. And then release the knees out. And then press them back down toward the chest. And lift the head up toward your knees. Go ahead and drop your knee to the right as you look to the left. And then switch sides. And one more time, center. And then 
under your knees for Shavasana. And just start to sink into your mat. Relaxing your arms down and out, your feet open a little bit. Become one with your mat and the floor. Really sink into the mat. Imagine you're laying right on the earth's surface and you feel that nurturing, grounding, protecting, healing, balancing energy of Mother Earth coursing through your body as you rest. Feel that deep release in your crown chakra and the forehead as you rest. Feel the eyes sink deep in the sockets. Feel the ears and the neck and the facial muscles relax. Release any holding in the shoulders, the chest, the heart. Feel your back muscles soften against the mat. There's a deep release in the low back and hips. The thighs soften against the femur bones the knees and ankles, the toes, the arms, the wrists, the fingers. Falling into a deeper relaxation as you rest. been love. You will always be love. Start to move around, wiggle your fingers and toes or roll your wrists and ankles as you bring your presence back into your physical body. And roll onto one to slowly come up.
bringing your hands to the heart in a prayer position. Notice your energy. Notice how you feel. Thank you for joining in this really special experience with us. We look forward to more of these classes with you in the future. Please let us know what you thought in the comments below. Like, share, subscribe. Let's Evolve Together will continue to offer meditation, mantra, yoga, and tarot readings. Thank you. Namaste. Enjoy. That's a wrap.